just your thoughts on you know the team's decision to to wear the Jacob Blake name across the helmets, and what do you feel like you guys are, are projecting by being able to do that? Yeah, I think uh, it's a good start, but I feel like we got to do more as well. And so uh, when Sean Payton he called the team me last night and told us um, that we're gonna you know put his name on our helmets, he also said that he's open for discussion of anybody bringing any ideas of trying to do more as well so I think that we're all going to get together and see if we can we can do more uh do more than that as well but I think it was a good start next questions from Rod Walker hey Emmanuel it's been four years since uh since Kaepernick took a knee but how frustrating is it or is it frustrating that you know four years later we're still having these same conversations yeah I think it's exhausting you know you know for me to keep having the same conversations over and over and over and uh, really not seeing any change it just keeps rehabbing it becomes exhausting because you know uh, to be able to even use you know this platform that us athletes are on uh, it's amazing but you know to keep talking about the same thing when truthfully you just want to live in a world or live in a, in, a, in a nation in which you're not judged by the color of your skin but by the content of your character like Martin Luther King once said and uh, you know, my my I'm over here talking to you guys, and my job is truthfully to play football. But I have to speak on these issues, and I have to talk about these issues, and address these issues because uh, because of the platform that we're on. And uh, you know, it is a, it is a problem in America. And I just hope that you know some type of change comes. And uh, you know, I can I just got off the rich eyes and showing. I just saw them how exhausting and draining it is that you know you you put so much energy and so much emotion into it and then you think that you know change is gonna come and then you know four or five months later it happens again and it happens again a year later and I'm sure in two years we're gonna be talking about the same thing over and over and so for me it's like when when is it ever gonna stop and when is the change actually gonna come and I pray it happens from you know a legislative point or from the government or something you know I hope that um, they're listening and um, they're trying to make some type of change. A quick follow-up what are the conversations like with you have a son, I think, right? Yeah. What are those conversations like, or what do you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, my my son knows. You know, he, he walked to me and told me, you know, about George Floyd, and uh, you know, I kind of told him, uh, you know, as as best I can. But my son's six right now, and when, as he gets older and older, I can really go in the deep with it. But I just want him to be a six year old right now. You know, I just want him to be a normal six year old and kind of kind of shield him from that you know I just feel like as a parent if you go too deep into it it's, it's not good you know let him be a kid and uh, you know my daughter's three and so I just I try to explain to him just a little bit you know uh, kind of like the whole Santa Claus is real situation but as the older and older you get and uh, we have that father time I, I, I definitely got to break break him down to the history of America and what is coming and what is still going on today which is sad Was there any talk of shutting down practice today? Did that come up among no, players? there was no talk. Not that I know of. Next question is from Catherine Terrell. I was wondering what was going through your head when you saw uh, what was going on with the NBA last night, and if this is maybe the most, uh, I guess, impactful you've seen. I'm trying to think of how to word it. Is this the most change or ability to make change you've seen from athletes and their platforms in your lifetime? You know, for me, uh, when I saw it, you know, it made me happy. Uh, but, you know, the longer and longer I thought about it, I said, well, will they cancel the entire season? Uh, because if they cancel the entire season, maybe that can bring about a change to show how serious it is. But if they go back to playing, uh, in my head, it's like, you know, is that really doing anything? Um, so I know, you know, LeBron, man, uh, he's, he's one of those guys that I look up to. And um, I know that uh, I just follow him on Instagram. I know he's reading books and trying to trying to, trying to to figure it out as well. And we all don't know what truthfully the right thing to do, but we all know that emotionally we're drained. We're drained of talking about it. We're drained of of it, of it happening over and over again we're drained of trying to make a change but change not coming we're drained of it happening over and over again we're drained uh emotionally uh, just emotionally drained and it's sad to see it because uh what a lot of people don't understand is you well, why are you drained it's because 
if you're in the same situation, you know that that could easily be you in that situation. That could easily be one of my loved ones in that situation. You say, oh, yeah, resist arrest. But it's like at the end of the day, OK, oh, yeah, uh, he resisted arrest. So he got in his car but to be shot seven times in the back. That's just ridiculous when it's three or four cops there that could have tackled this guy to the ground. And if anybody says that 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 should have happened in that situation, they're out of their mind. And so that that's just draining to think because every time I see that situation, I say that could easily been me. You know, that could easily been one of my cousins. That could easily be one of my uncles, you know. And so and the reason why I say that is it could have easily been me because I'm an African American in America, in which um which is sad to say, it seems just like not all cops, but a majority of these cops, you know, uh, when they see African American, I feel like they have no value in life. Uh, no, they don't value our life as much as they uh, value a Caucasian or or anybody else. And so, I, that's just what I believe, and uh, you know, and what I've seen uh, in terms of these videos and stuff, and how they're just brutally murdering um, and and just taking taking their pain or whatever it is out on us. Uh, it just goes to show that uh, my theory is, is semi-correct. Next question is from Christopher Dunnels. Hey, Mr. Emmanuel, it's tough to follow that. Uh, that was really powerful stuff, and I hate to just transition back to questions about your on-field work, but I was curious what you're seeing, if any similarities between the Saints defense in practice and the 49ers defense you face in practice in your time in San Francisco. Uh, I didn't. I, I wasn't at training camp with the 49ers defense, so I really, uh, I really don't know. Uh, when I got there, we were already practicing, and I wasn't even going against the defense. I didn't go against Richard Sherman none and all that practice. But uh, our defense, you know, I was talking to the receivers coach RC, and he was just saying how how much better each year. Uh, they're getting better and better. So I know one thing that they they every time I catch the ball, the entire defense swarms to the ball, and they're trying to bat the ball out. Sometimes I get punched on the punched in the stomach because they're trying to just poke the ball out. And it's five seconds, ten seconds after the play, they going after the ball. So. Uh, I know one thing, those guys, man, they, they bring the energy and they fly around. So I'm looking forward to seeing if, you know, we can put it all together. But I've, I got a feeling we're going to be a pretty good team this year. Next question is from Luke Johnson. Daniel, uh, what have you kind of learned about Trey Quan Smith since you've been here? And uh, just in general, uh, what's kind of the, the, the hard part about transitioning between inside and outside? Uh, just technically as a receiver. Yeah, I mean, Trey Quan's a player. Uh, he, he's, he's a quiet player, but he's a player. Uh, he makes those plays, and he just jaws back. He doesn't say too much. He don't talk too much crap. Uh, crap. He, just, he just goes to work every single day and makes his plays and go home, wakes up and makes his plays and go home. And, uh, you know, the transition from outside to inside in this offense, if you can play outside and you can play inside, you, you're going to be able to, you know, uh, stack up the catches and stack up the yards and, uh, I think that, you know, a lot of the guys, uh, the receivers that they have, the majority of these guys can move inside and move outside. And so uh, I'm looking forward to playing uh, with, you know, the entire receiving core. Benny's been balling and Trey's been balling. And I think uh, we had a good day today. Um, and so you know, we got to just keep building off that. Next one's from Nick Underhill. Yeah. How comfortable do you, do you feel now in the offense since the last time we talked to you? And it seems like the last few days you've kind of really started to hit your, your stride and make a lot of plays. Do you feel like it, it's starting to get a little bit more natural? Yeah, yeah, and I think they're starting to design a couple of plays to give me the ball. At first, I was just taking the top off the defense and you know, just allowing the tight end and the X to get open. But now they're moving me inside and moving me outside. Today I played one rep at F in which they put me in position to make a play and um, you know, I, I'm starting to like it a lot more. At first, I was, you know, I was like, "Dang, I'm just, I'm just running, I'm just running off." But uh, the receivers coach told me just be patient. We was just installing, and now we got an entire install out. So Sean P and the offensive coordinators uh, and, the, and the receivers coaches they coming together and drawing up plays for me to be able to get the ball. And so I'm loving it. And uh, just on on the defense with all the safeties they got in the corners, you know, those guys you're going against. How good is that secondary? And how hard is it just to get open? Man, those guys are good. They're, those guys are good. Lattimore and, and Jenkins, man, they, they they form a tandem in which they're going to be able to make some plays. I've been uh, really uh, surprised by Jenkins, just just his feet. I ran a comeback in the first couple of days of training camp. And 
I thought I was going to be wide open, and this guy stopped on the dime. His feet are really good, and he stopped on the dime and broke up the pass. And I was true. I was really surprised. I've never seen a guy cover that route how I ran it, and so I'm looking forward to playing with both of them. I know that. Uh, you know, defensively from a secondary standpoint, we're going to be solid because we got two solid corners. And so I'm, I'm looking forward to it.